St Paul's is never a, a bad place to start a walk, is it? And this is where we're going to start today, on the crest of Ludgate Hill. I was about to do a piece, and I'm going to go up here, hang on. What is this alleyway? This is Stationers Hall Court, so let's, let's go up here. I must have been up here before, this is one of the joys of the city. This is not what the video is about, but in a way it is. Now I don't know if I've been in here before, you know. This is obviously Stationers Hall. I'll put the dates and what have you on the screen. Wow, 1887, it's not an enormously old uh, building there, but um, I'm sure the Guild of Stationers go back a long way. Stationers Garden here. Now I know what an educated and well-positioned group of people watch these videos. So is that ever open? And can I have a look if it's not? Because I think somebody watching these videos might have access. Um, this plaque here on Stationers Hall says, Winkin de Word, father of Fleet Street, first set up his press by Shoe Lane near this hall, circa 1500. Wow, so you could say this is the uh, birthplace of Fleet Street here. And that is one of the things that I, uh, I love about making these videos, is that is not part of the video. <laughs> well, it will be, it will be in the edit, but that is, wasn't on my list at all. I was about to say, I always get excited by walking down Ludgate Hill because it really does reveal part of the topography of London, the ancient topography of London. You see it when you walk down Ludgate Hill into the Fleet Valley, which flows at the bottom of Ludgate Hill. And that very much links with today's video, which is an investigation into a major tributary, a lost tributary of the River Fleet flow, that flowed through Roman London. And it's a, a tributary and a series of streams, in fact, that the Romans had to accommodate in order to build their defensive wall around London. This is the kind of thing that gets me so excited. Gets me so excited. I read about it in an old copy of London Archaeologist la, well, a few nights ago, and I was like, I just need to go out there and walk and find that river, walk that river. And actually, I did some more research this morning and it threw up even more really, really fascinating things that will possibly work into this river, but into this river, into this, into this walk. But this is you coming with me in a way to do some, I think what people would call action research, to come out into the landscape, to see what we can see, to find what we can find. And the, the site that triggered all of this is up here in Old Bailey. So excited. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I love this. Is, this, is, this is at the heart of why I do what I do. Some people ask that when I do a Q&A, why do you do what you do? It's things like this. Just reading an archaeological report from 2014 that's actually reporting on something that goes back to 2000, 2000 actually, that in itself was picking up on something that had been discovered in 1907 that really does reveal another layer of the ancient landscape of this amazing city. I'm looking down here, right into the fleet. It's incredible. And this is a new type of Lost River walk for me. This is not just a lost river that was lost because it was buried in the Victorian era when the sewers were created. This is a lost river that was lost to history until just over 100 years ago. And actually, it turns out there are more of them in the city of London, a network of lost rivers of Roman London. Primarily, I want to start with one and let's see where we get to. We might come back and do the others. And this view here shows how the site sits on a hill, on the top of a hill on high ground. It's really startling. 
So the key site we're looking for to start our investigations is at 7 to 10 Old Bailey, not the more famous criminal court up here, but I believe it's down on this side here. I think it's just on the left-hand side there. There were some excavations down here in 1907 that turned up a number of interesting things. Um, one was a number of ditches that ran across this site here, suggesting the possibility of streams or ditches. I think initially they were identified as ditches. Of course, ditches are great for archaeologists, aren't they? Because people chuck all sorts of rubbish in them. And then that would tell you a lot about the way they lived. And these ditches were believed to be of Roman origin. And also, it was suspected there would be sections of the old Roman wall as well, which is amazing. To, you know, at that point they were still uncovering all the sections of the old Roman wall, some of our oldest bits of built structure in the entirety of the city, in the entirety of London. In fact, they must be the oldest bits, mustn't they? Or is the Temple of Mithras older? You can see I'm so excited, I'm unable to process the information properly. In summary, what we are interested in is the discovery that actually a major tributary of the River Fleet ran through this site. And that was what was uncovered when they came back to the site. When I think it must be this building here behind me was built. And they did a, quite a long period of what they call a watching brief, I guess, where they're, as the building work's going on, they want to make sure they didn't disturb any of the archeological finds. Something we've got to look back on is they did find a section of the Roman wall here. And usually when they find sections of the Roman wall, they are, put on display. Um, it's not marked on the maps as being a place where you can see the Roman wall. Again, people in the viewers will come forward and say, oh yeah, that's, I worked in that building, it's in the basement, come and have a look. But a section of the Roman wall was also found here. So that big glass building there is the site. Somewhere in the basement of that building are the ditches that were excavated and a section of Roman wall as well. And what we're gonna do is I want to walk that lost river, that lost tributary of the River Flea, a lost section of the old landscape of Roman London. And what's not mentioned in any of the things that I've read is the possible source. It's all right, carry on, don't worry. That's fine, no, no, it's part of the vibe. <laughs> um, but it's the source, it's a possible source. However, where we're lucky, we're going to do our usual looking for clues in the ground because I've already seen one on the way here. This is looking down into what appears to be the, a, a, a river valley. I mean, I didn't think it would be evident in the, um, in the landscape, but I mean, that does seem pretty compelling, doesn't it? But we are lucky in that it is marked on the maps of Roman London that I've got. I've got two maps of Roman London. They show slightly different things, but they show this network of rivers that ran through Roman London, not just this one here, which has multiple kind of like sources and it comes together. And then we're going to go to a tidal island on the fleet. <laughs> it's amazing. But then also the Woolbrook on the other side had tributaries that ran through the city as well. I think that could be for another day. But this is, you know, mind blowing for me. So excited about this. And this is the Museum of London map. And this is, look, this is the tributary. You can see it's no spindly little brook. This is a major tributary that cuts through the wall. We are roughly here. Um, Alders, the, uh, what, what gate is that? Newgate, sorry. Newgate is just up there. And Ludgate is at, uh, it's just around the corner. So we are just, we must be here. This point here, right in the middle of that river. We're going to walk down here to this tidal island and then we're going to go back and f back to the source up here which I think may also have been used as a well, a medieval well. And this looks like, but this looks more than a ditch here, doesn't it? You can see, look, this is probably the culverted bit, you see it straightened, but here it looks like a natural stream down to the Thames. So when they excavated this site, they found two channels, two streams, or two channels, two ditches, 20 feet to the southeast corner of 7 to 10 Old Bailey, that big glass building behind me there. 
One of these was found to be a natural stream that had deposits in it and silts and all the rest of it that dates it at least to the Pleistocene era. And this stream was found to be at least 17 feet wide. That's no little babbling brook. That's a, <laughs> that is a proper stream. And they roughly aligned um, north, northeast with south, southwest, draining from land to the north of the old city wall and would have run through Roman London and then they would have canalised some of these and well they created their own ditches or they canalised one that ran south all the way through Paternoster Square into the Thames. So they would have, I think they lined it with wood and they created this kind of, if you like, a kind of Roman culvert to culvert one of the streams straight down into the Thames. These as well were, had to be dealt with before they could build the wall because we're here right on the, on the eastern slope of the River Fleet on high land. And you see it when you walk up Limeburner Street, you really see the rise of the land up to this high point that we're at here. It paints a picture of this site as a hilltop, which became a fortified hilltop, in shaped by tributaries that drain down to the River Fleet. It's a really beautiful vision of the topography, the ancient topography of not just Roman London, this would have been the shape of the land that existed when the Romans turned up. You've got to try and imagine it. We're, we're basically on the line of the Roman wall. Actually, out here, we're out slightly outside it, in the ditch, <laughs> in a ditch, and there would have been a river cutting through here, roughly where I'm stood now, running into the River Fleet. Now, we're lucky that these are marked on a map of Roman London, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to get, but it's just standing here really gives you a sense of the topography, you know? Well, I get it anyway. Let's walk this river. It's this stream here where my thumb is, which is the one we're interested in. As you can see, just to the south of it, there is another. But I feel like it probably ran. Three alleyways are often there for a reason. Um, lots of reasons, but that will do for us, I think. And this has the kind of indicators that we often look for, doesn't it? Look, it's dropping down into, into lower ground. Obviously, we're dropping down to lower ground because we're dropping off this hill into the fleet. And there is a definite dip in the, in the land there in Limeburner Street. It's not quite aligned though properly with the site, I don't think, but I mean, that would be the natural place it, to suggest it runs through this building here. And opposite the alleyway that I walked through, you have this tree here and look, we get a great view down into the valley of the fleet. Look at this. It really reveals the topography of London. This stuff like this is just so magical, isn't it? And we're looking down there into the River Fleet, where that guy's walking. He had a very wet feet if he was doing that 300 years ago. Just looking back through that alleyway, there's a bitterly cold wind whipping through here, by the way. <laughs> I hope that's not interfering with the audio, but. Uh, that's the site is just to the left of the frame there on the other side. So if it's flowing southwest from there, it would be flowing down through here. So I think we should go down these steps. We don't know the name of this little tributary. Maybe that's what we could do uh, <laughs> in this video, give it a name. So now we're looking along Fleet Street, along the course of the River Fleet, towards uh, the bottom of Ludgate Hill. So Ludgate would have been along, well, it would have been back from the river slightly. Um, but that's not the zone of interest for us. The zone of interest for us is back here looking up north along Fleet Street and it's speculated that it, well on all the maps it shows it forming a little tidal island 
and uh, the Museum of London map speculates that upon that tidal island there would have been a mill, a Roman mill there. So we'll walk up one side of that little island here. I don't know if it's too convenient, but you can see, look, there's another road that leads off, a little road that leads off, service road to these massive buildings, but it does seem to form the shape of the island that is marked on the map. Intrigue, I mean, stranger things have happened. I'm just gonna go up here to see if there's a little road that leads off from here. No, it does just lead to the bowels of the building. I mean, it is intriguing the way that the shape of this river here, the way it splits in two and creates this island, this tidal island, does seem to have a correlation with the present street plan, with, with this street here being the northern channel and the street that I walked down when I came down the steps being that southern channel there. It is uncanny because look, that's Newgate up there, which is just further up the street there. I mean, it's, could it be? I mean, it's just, well, it's, it, it, whether it's the exact course or not, I don't know, but it, it is mirrored in the streetscape. I'll try and put a contemporary map up here so you can see. I do love things like that so much because it, it is there. I mean, that same shape, that same pattern is there in the street plan. There's another little side street up here. What I want to do now is walk from the north of the site now and walk up back to its potential source or where I think there might be a source. Luckily, um, this map shows roughly where it is. But what I like about that is the other night when I was thinking, well, how would I find a source? I thought, well, look for medieval sources of uh, water to the north. Because obviously the Woolbrook further to the east rises in Moorgate. And I looked in my old book, my book of old London springs, wells and baths, and there were a number of wells uh, around the Barbican area. Obviously Clarkham Well and all of that. There were obviously famous for its wells and springs. The fleet is called the River of Wells. Sometimes the pumps, the water pumps, or water sources like the Aldgate pump, were fed by uh, underground streams were fed by rivers, or they were, you know, they were channeled away from those rivers into the pumps. The wells, obviously, springs and wells give birth to rivers. So, um, yes, roughly where some of those wells were, documented in the Middle Ages, is also where it shows on the map a potential source of the stream. So we're going to walk there now, and then perhaps what we'll do is we'll walk the straightened stream, so they go straight down to the Thames. I'm loving this. Look, <laughs> look at this, Bear Alley. dead end but I'm glad I came up here anyway so back to the fleet looks like somebody had a proper Friday night didn't they got stuck into a whole barrel and there's a massive development here right near the viaduct basically at the foot of the hill the eastern hill of the city of London So I think what I'm going to do is retrace my steps and basically now walk the whole length of the river. So we're going to go along Old Sea Coal Lane, which is where we came down from the high ground. So let's um, try and find the point. I'm <laughs> waving my 360 camera around. Let's try and find the point 
where um, old Fleet Lane would make it, would flow up to the southeast corner of the site on Old Bailey. Back in Limeburner Street here, this is my third time here today. The site, to just to remind you, is through there, Old Bailey. And when I walked up here from Ludgate Hill, you can see there's a definite dip in the land there. I think it even comes out on the camera. I think, let's see, I think that probably does align with Old Fleet Lane, so maybe my initial hunch was correct. Yeah, and that low dip there does seem to align with Fleet Place below this building, on the other side and below. This is Fleet Place building, Old Fleet Lane is beneath it. And the low ground flows there, and our site is on the other side. And look, you can see we're looking up now. That is actually the Central Criminal Court, the Old Bailey. But um, next to it is our site, so this all does seem to line up. It's kind of it's interesting, isn't it? This really has cracked open this side of Roman London for me in a way. I don't know. I mean, it sounds. I suppose it should be pretty obvious. The tributaries of the Walbrook are less surprising, I guess. Although I didn't know there were so many. Like there's one that runs under Guildhall down into the Walbrook. We'll do those another day, I think, for sure. But this side of it, it's just so, it was like kind of staggering to see that map. Well, I only found the map this morning, but to read the description of this as a tributary valley of the fleet. And this high land, the hill here, with the Roman wall running through it, the bastions at either end, up at Newgate and down at Ludgate. The big wide ditch, which would have been, I guess, part of the original defensive ditch, apart from being a place to dump rubbish. It's fascinating. What was also interesting is that one of the ditches was later um, improved, redug up again, but at the time of Alfred the Great in the Anglo Saxon period, when the city was reclaimed in I think 86 is when Alfred resettled London. I'm still fascinated by that whole idea that London, there's a 400 year period where London doesn't seem to have been used, this part of London. Uh, London Vic, Saxon London, is to the west around Covent Garden. There's a dog running up the street there. Yeah, it's an interesting image, isn't it? 400 years of an abandoned Roman city with crumbling mosaics and old villas. By the way, there was a villa on the map down there near Newgate Street, but um, that's, that's, you know, something else. <laughs> so we're now going to follow the course of the tributary through the other side of this building here, through the other side of the Central Criminal Court, um, across Newgate Street and just outside the city wall where, where it's believed to have risen. This is looking uh, east along Newgate Street here and the Roman Wall ran just slightly to the north. Um, I'll link below to my walk along the Roman Wall. That is one of the great, great London walks. It's fantastic. And there's a couple more bits now that you can view because I did it during, um, during lockdown. So a lot of the buildings were closed. You couldn't get into them, but now they're reopened. And this church here on Newgate Street is associated with my, uh, with my <laughs> famous namesake, John Rogers the Martyr, who was eventually burnt at the stake because he became a dangerous heretic. And he was burnt at the stake just down there at Smithfield, upon the smooth field. So our, our stream possibly had two sources, just to the north of uh, the wall, just so we're going to walk a little east along Newgate Street and then follow one of the possible courses of the stream. We don't know, we're just kind of looking at old maps and guessing really. Here we're walking past the site of Greyfriars Monastery from 1225 to 1538, where it then appears to have been replaced by Christ's Hospital, 15, 1552 to 1902. One of the sources seems to align with the end of Warwick Lane, that's Warwick Lane, but here we have um, a big fat building. It's interesting though, because that then does seem 
to see the stream running through the grounds of Greyfriars Monastery, which is interesting, uh, and also the hospital. Hmm, you don't get that when you just look at the map. You kind of have to come, come out on the ground and look around to find that. That is intriguing, isn't it? It's got to have been recorded somewhere. I'm sure it is. I'm sure there's records of these places which note the stream. It's funny when you look at the old maps, like th this one, my map of Norman London that I have that was, I'm not sure when it was created, but I used it when I did the Woolbrook walk. Very reliable for the Woolbrook. Ah, sorry, I'm gonna interrupt myself. Bank of America building behind me is one of the places where they've got a bit of Roman wall in the garden, in the basement, sorry. And when I came, it was locked down and you couldn't go in, but now you can go in by appointment, I believe. So we'll go through Grey Friars Churchyard here and uh, the passage on the far side. And of course, we're accidentally doing one of the lost churches of the City of London. I think I've already covered it, but just walked into the Bank of America. It is a Saturday. Security guard didn't know anything about the Roman War. Looked at me like I was a, very suspiciously. You could tell he was just looking me up and down and got too close and went, nah. I think he thought I was making it up, but you can make an appointment and go and look at it. Obviously, I don't think anyone's told him, and I, I get the impression you can't do it at the weekend. Um, but yeah, that is the thing. I can't find anything there. You might be able to see it through the, through the glass, even. Who knows? What's the section of our wall doing in the Bank of America, by the way? Give us our wall back, America. Joshy, like mucking around. Comedy. Bit of a clown. Study clown, in fact. There's a plaque here which tells us that Christchurch Greyfriars a Wren church was destroyed by fire bombs in December 1940. And this is Grey Friars Passage. We'll just um, pass through here to the potential source, which is near Postman's Park. This is a lovely bit of old masonry, I guess, from the old church. We will just pass through into the churchyard. Oh, actually, no, we'd be into the body of the church, wouldn't it? What am I on about? And it is beautiful the way the remnants of the old medieval churches that were bomb damaged have been retained as little parks and gardens. As many of you know, I've got a whole series of videos exploring these spaces, which is incomplete. So I am now, I think, within the gated environs of the Bank of America. Um, but that seems to be where this source rises, at the end of the street here. I drew a bit of a blank there. I got there and also I got descended on by like two security guards who were very friendly, much friendlier than the other guy. But um, there's nothing, you know, it's just nothing there really. Um, however, it does, I'm in the right place now to walk the, the canalised stream that they directed straight south into the Thames. It's unlikely, the reports acknowledge this, that the natural flow of a stream wouldn't naturally flow over the hill, but that is what they did discover, that, the, that there, were stru there were watercourses cutting across this um, eastern slope of the hill that one down there but i don't think i've used the term the western stream in my notes i always refer to it as the western stream i think this is the first time i'm saying it in the video a bit confused because it is the western side of the city of london so that that's obnoxious that is the name of our tributary we'll call it the western stream but now we're going to just walk down the canalized one that cuts through paternoster square down to the thames museum of london map has the whole course but it's not as clearly well you don't have the contemporary street names apart from St Paul's Cathedral. So I think this is, this is the stream here. And then we'll follow that. And then we cut across Paternoster Square here, down to the Thames. And then we've covered the lost rivers of Roman London on the western half, the western stream and whatever this was, well, we can call it what we like. We can call it the Western Canal, the Paternoster Canal, the Ludgate Canal. Throw your names in the, uh, in the comments below. For context, the old Bailey site that we started at is just down there on the left, just past those traffic lights. And we're going down here, down Rose Street, down uh, the map I've got actually calls this the Western Stream. The man-made one is the Western Stream. Interesting, isn't it? And I guess, you see, that's the thing with archaeology or with any type of sort of academic investigation or systematic investigation, is that you're always building on top of it and finding out new things. 
and improving the knowledge and building up layers of it. So the report I read is 10 years old, so things may even have changed in the, uh, since 2014. We might find in the comments below someone from the Museum of London saying, well, actually, I mean, I'm sure there'll be lots. It's great walking across Paternoster Square. Of course, this is, I'm on a private estate now, CCTV everywhere. They get, they've got the London Stock Exchange. They get really a little bit twitchy. There's always a great moment when we pass through Temple Bar, which of course used to sit across Fleet Street. It was the entry to the city of London. And was lying in Theobald's Park, just in the undergrowth for a while. I think Ian Sinclair went and saw it there, when it was still just like the entrance to a private house. There's St Paul's Cathedral, where we started our walk really, isn't it, today? was uh, also the site of a, of a Roman temple, a place of pagan worship going back. They reckon even before the Romans were here, I'm not sure what evidence there is of that, but it is on a very dominant position at the top of Ludgate Hill. And of course, on the other side, on the other side of Ludgate Hill, a little bit further along, you drop into the other valley, into the valley of the Walbrooks, the twin hills of the city of London. In reality, there are more than two hills, of course. And the map shows the, uh, the western stream, the canalised stream cutting across this end of the, well, this is not now Paterson Square, but the square that houses St Paul's Cathedral. So we'll follow that and the wonderful little streets that lead down. Back across Ludgate Hill, and the stream would have basically flowed across here. Well, all the little lanes, to be honest with you, that lead down to the river are great. The map shows actually that uh, it would have run between the lanes in the existing street plan. So I, I think we'll go down, I think Creed Lane down there. St Andrew's Hill. This is now on the course of one of my previous City of London churches walks. I'll link to the playlist below. The Cockpit Pub. There have been a number of good pubs on the route, if you want, but that, I remember having a really great Friday night in there once with a mate of mine. Good pub. Busy, it seems like it's full of life at four o'clock on a Saturday. And just looking down here to Ireland Yard. It's proving unnaturally difficult to get down to the river from here um, unless I make going a big loop back to uh, back to Farringdon Street and go up around which is completely unnecessary because <laughs> there is no confluence to observe. I'm glad to have come down to the river down to here. I feel that this point marks an appropriate conclusion to my walk today. It feels like this is where a Roman drainage ditch, it, although on the map, I don't know, it feels like a canalised part of it is, is short. It's like, more like a redirected water source. I don't know why I feel qualified to even go and re-categorise 
uh, this stream, the Western stream here. But it was amazing to walk these two watercourses. But the, the, the main thing for me was that major tributary there, which we now can't call the Western stream if this ditch is marked as the Western. Hmm. It should be the Western Canal and that's the stream. But anyway, the, these Western lost rivers of Roman London, such, I can't tell you what it does to my brain to do this kind of thing, to walk these to walk this landscape, it feels like I'm stepping back through time and walking 2,000 years ago and longer ago as well. Um, what an amazing, thank you for coming with me uh, on this investigation. I mean, it's a bit messy video, I would have thought. It, I don't know how it's going to come out, but I think it's going to come out a bit messy. But that's what it is. These are these investigations going out on the ground and seeing what's there, seeing what we can see. And there's plenty more to explore in the city of London. As we know, I've got more lost churches to do. But I want to walk the tributaries of the Woolbrook that run through the city as well. That's going to be really fascinating. That's actually how I came to find this article. I was looking for an article about an eastern tributary couldn't find it did this one instead and it's been amazing well look thank you again for coming on this escapade with me and yeah like as i always like to say i look forward to seeing you on the next walk wherever that may be and i genuinely have no idea i think the video after this one though will be the one at swedenborg house with ian sinclair and Stephen mcneely in the exhibition so not really a walk at all but integral to all of this all of this stuff that i'm doing that exhibition and the ideas in it are integral to this work. So it's a good bit of background. Anyway, take care. I'm rambling now. I'm going to ramble. Go, go back up to Paternoster Square now. Maybe buy a new backpack. That's what I'm thinking. There's a big sale on at Black's.